gentlemen of the internet, how are you guys doing? Today, we're gonna talk about my new favorite heart rate monitor, the Polar OH1 Plus. We'll go over all the details about this heart rate monitor, why I like the heart rate monitor, and some of the things that I dislike most about the heart rate monitor. And quick disclaimer here, uh, the heart rate monitor was sent to me. Uh, it was sent to me with the review in mind. Uh, and while I wasn't paid to endorse this product uh, in my footage or video, won't be able to be previewed by Polar or anyone else for that matter before you guys get to see it on YouTube, uh, I do like to let people know that I didn't pay for this product with my own money. And in addition to that, anytime a company sends me a product, uh, I try to pass it along to you guys, the viewer, in some form of a giveaway. So stay tuned to the end of this video for the details on how to participate in that. Okay, I already mentioned that I really like this heart rate monitor, so that's a bit of a giveaway there. Uh, but one of my favorite things about this heart rate monitor is that it's easy to use and it works well for all of the sports that I like doing. That would be swimming, biking, and running. Uh, this heart rate monitor can broadcast to the form swim goggles, which are those goggles with the heads up display built into them. So you can actually see live heart rate metrics while you're in the middle of a workout. But you don't have to have those form swim goggles. This heart rate monitor has a built in memory so that you can store your workout uh, and sync it to the Polar Beats app afterwards. Now I've been using this heart rate monitor for about four or five months. Uh, and I have not been able to swim with it a ton just because all of the pools have been closed because of the quarantine. But I will say that the times that I've used this, the built-in memory has worked for me and I've been able to pull up my heart rate data afterwards. And this product is super light. Uh, on its own, it weighs five grams and with the strap, it only weighs 18 grams, so it's not the kind of heart rate monitor that you're gonna actually notice while you're wearing it, unless you're wearing it super tight or something like that. It's about 26.2 millimeters in diameter. Uh, it's kind of like the size of a quarter. And there's actually just one button on this device. It's super simple to use. You just kind of press and hold the button itself, wait for those green LED lights to come on, and that's the side that you're gonna wanna point towards your skin. Now, when you're swimming, you might wanna point that towards your temple, uh, but when you're biking or running, you can use it on your upper forearm or even in your bicep area. In the LEDs, that's what's actually penetrating your skin and allowing the optical sensor to read your heartbeat below your skin. And the unit broadcasts your heart rate over AMP Plus, and that's a broadcast to an unlimited number of devices. Uh, you might find AMP Plus as a connection type on your cycling computer or your watch. Uh, my gym also uses that particular technology to do some group fitness classes. So I can use this Polar OH1 Plus on any of those things. And it also broadcasts a signal on Bluetooth Smart. So that's a Bluetooth Smart heart rate connection. And you might use Bluetooth when you're connecting one of these devices to like a smartphone or an iPad or something like that. And a lot of newer cycling computers and watches can handle both Ant Plus as well as Bluetooth connections. And the OH1 broadcasts both of these types of connections simultaneously. So there's no settings or setups or anything like that that you have to worry about. And so far, I've been able to connect this to three different brands of sports watches, uh, two different brands of cycling computers, 
both Wahoo and Garmin, uh, as well as an iPad running Zwift and an iPhone. And one of my favorite things about this device is that it just flat out works. There's that discovery process, whether that's you know Bluetooth discovery that you've probably done with your phone a thousand times, or pairing it with an Ant Plus device, that's still a discovery process, but you've probably done this before with other devices. And what I find fantastic about this is I had zero problems connecting it to lots of different devices, and I found like the item just worked. Now there are some legacy gym equipment that tends to use the analog a five kilohertz connection that this heart rate monitor might not be compatible with, but it hasn't been something that I've personally run into while testing this product. Now I'm not gonna dive deep into heart rate accuracy, uh, but what I'd like you to know is that these off-wrist optical heart rate monitors are much more accurate than watch-based wrist optical monitors. And the OH1 Plus in particular is excellent. I'm gonna leave two links in the description of this video. One is to the DC Rainmaker's full review on this product, where he shows some graphs comparing this product to others. The other is a YouTube channel that my friend Dave Dillon has put on called Chasing the Summit. Uh, and he actually tested and compares this heart rate monitor to the chest-based heart rate monitor, which is kind of the gold standard for heart rate monitor accuracy. Uh, but also he compares the Phoenix 6 Garmin wrist-based heart rate monitor. So I'll leave a link to both of those down in the description of this video, uh, and you guys can kind of dive into that if accuracy is something that you're worried about. But optical heart rate accuracy does vary quite a bit, depending on things like your skin color, where you wear the heart rate monitor, and how tight you wear the heart rate monitor. It doesn't have to fit super tight, like some sort of tourniquet or something like that, uh, but keep in mind that this device is looking for the pulse and the rhythm of your heart. So if it's bouncing around, uh, it tends to be a lot less accurate. And I tend to wear this particular heart rate monitor on my forearm, uh, but it's probably even more accurate if you go a little further up and wear it on your bicep. When you're swimming, you wear the heart rate monitor on your temple. And when I first started thinking about this video, I figured I would tell people uh, not to wear this heart rate monitor on top of their swim cap, you know, kind of a common sense type thing. But then I happened to test it while I was in the water and the optical heart rate monitor actually penetrated through the latex cap and was actually able to pick up my heart rate through the swim cap. So I guess there's that. Uh, probably still a good idea to put this next to your scalp uh, on your temple, uh, potentially as close to your goggles as possible. I think it'd be funny if we had some sort of weird competition where we saw where people could put this heart rate monitor and still get an accurate reading. Although I have a feeling it would go, you know, PG-13 pretty quickly. All right, so I had zero problems when using this for running and biking. And if you're just using this for running or biking, there are some competitive products that you could potentially go with that would do well. Uh, but one of the things that I loved about using this for running and biking was the fact that you could just grab it and go out the door and it just worked. It just feels a little less encumbering, a little less intrusive, I would say, uh, just to put this thing on and use it. And I'm not one of those people who hates wearing a chest strap. I know a lot of you guys have problems with that, uh, but they typically don't bother me at all. I do notice sometimes with chest straps that I struggle to get a little bit of a connection when I first get started, uh, but it does help to have a little bit of liquid or a little bit of gel in between the chest strap and my chest just to get that connection started. But with the OH1 Plus, you just slap it on and go, and it seems to work well right from the get-go. Okay, I think swimming with the OH1 is really where this heart rate monitor differentiates itself from everything else on the market. Now, if you buy the OH1 Plus, you'll actually get a number of different clips that clip the heart rate monitor into your goggle straps. Now keep in mind that this device is broadcasting your heart rate monitor, but you can also store that data on the device itself. Now I use this with the Form Swim Goggles, those heads-up display systems, and I've reviewed the Form Swim Goggles in the past. 
But using this heart rate monitor with these goggles, it makes a lot of sense. And with the OH-1 Plus, you could keep an eye on your heart rate as well as your total time while you're racing an open water swim race or base your lap swim workouts on heart rate in the pool. And I found connecting this device to my form swim goggles super easy. You can either do it with your phone or you can actually do it from the goggles themselves, which is the way that I did it. And what I really loved about this was that the form swim team actually prompted me and told me, hey, we've got a new device discovery from your goggles. Uh, do you wanna change up the displays? And that happened as soon as I opened up my smartphone after having synced the heart rate monitor. A couple other quick tips would just be to uh, use that heart rate monitor as close as possible uh, next to the computer side of the form swim goggles and clip into both of the goggle straps uh, just to reduce drag in the water. You don't want this heart rate monitor flapping around anywhere. And form swim goggles does provide their own goggle clip, uh, which is sturdy and that's great. Uh, but I found it extremely difficult to remove the OH-1 device from the clip itself once it was in there. And I, I actually fixed this by drilling a hole in the back of the clip just so I could push uh, the OH-1 device out of the clip with my finger or a pin or something like that. My swim workouts tend to not be based on heart rate, uh, but I am fascinated by the fact that a coach could actually be on deck with an iPad and monitoring a group of swimmers' heart rates with the Polar Team app. And that one has a maximum of 40 athletes that can be monitored at the same time. So I might have to hit up some coaches or something like that to do that test, but I haven't actually been able to test that app yet. And just like a lot of the smartwatches on the market, Polar suggests not pressing the button on this heart rate monitor while you're underwater. And the buttons on the OH-1 are a little small and it's hard to know if you've actually pressed them. And once you've pressed the buttons, the device is supposed to show a white light until it finds a heart rate and then it blinks green, which is great, but it's hard to notice if it's underneath clothes or it's on your temple or something like that. And if you wanna record a workout, you press the button twice and the light blinks twice to let you know that it started. And again, I found this extremely frustrating because you can't really see the lights when you're swimming or if you've got this device underneath your sleeve. What I ended up doing was pressing the button twice and just kind of hoping for the best, which is just annoying because you kind of feel like you don't know if you're actually collecting the data that you hope to collect. But I will say that it worked for me each and every single time that I actually wanted to record a workout. And the price for the OH-1 Plus is $80 US, and I feel like that's a lot. I wish the price was a little bit more in line with that kind of $50 to $60 range, but I think that it's just too much to ask for all of these features for that particular price point. I'll leave a link to where I find the best price in the description of this video, and if it is on Amazon, that'll be an affiliate link, so thanks in advance for supporting the channel if you end up using that. It doesn't cost you anything extra or anything like that. And when we look at competitive products on the market, you can see that the OH-1 is probably priced correctly. Uh, Wahoo makes a product called the Ticker Fit, and that's also an optical heart rate monitor that you can wear on your arm or your bicep. And that product is priced very similar to this one, but it doesn't have that onboard storage. There's also a product called the Scotia Rhythm 24 that does have memory storage, uh, but that product costs $99. And while it might have some better lights and indicators, I do think that the Polar OH-1 Plus is kind of a better price with a little bit better software. I think their Polar Beats app is excellent. Now, if you want to be entered to win this exact device from Polar, all you have to do is drop below this particular video in the comment section and let me know what sport you would use this heart rate monitor for. Now, I'm obviously really going to miss this heart rate monitor, but I will wipe away the tears. I'll also wash the strap as well as go over the entire device with some sort of disinfectant before I send it your way. But they do sell a replacement armband if you're really worried about hygiene. 
And I'll leave a link to where you can buy that particular replacement armband in the description of this video if you guys need to pick something like that up. And I really wish you guys all the best of luck. All right, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Be sure to subscribe if you're into this sort of thing, and that would be swimming, biking, or running. There's a little notification bell down there somewhere, and that just allows you to be notified of whenever I post new videos, which I typically post about once per week. All right, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and we will see you guys in the next one.